Hey everyone, for those of you that are new here, my name is Tomas. I'm your host with special guest Maddie Gardner, and you're listening to Cheer Analyst. Hi, Maddie. How are you? People don't know we've kn- I've known you since 2006. You were on Juniors. Like I've known you mm-hmm. since what's the Tina Turner dance? Um, Roland. Is it terrific? Oh yeah, that was the boy service. Yeah, I've known you for both of those dances because you've danced to it That's twice, right. once in 2006 and once in 09. I have just so thoroughly enjoyed everything you've been doing on Cheer Analyst. It's allowing me to just relive and revisit and remember, and it's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, It's really my love letter to all of the OGs. As cheerleading is evolving towards uh, being a legitimate sport, there's nowhere that documents or Mm -hmm. records any of the early athletes. One day they'll look back and they'll want to know who invented the 360 Bala, do you know anyone? Do you know who did I'm, that? I'm, I'm, actually, I'm familiar with that stunt. You'll have to enlighten me. There's like little stunts like that that people don't, they won't know, and it's important. And you're, you are one of the you are part of the tapestry of cheerleading for the rest of time so So it's important that people know your story so so kind you're the cheer historian as well as the cheer analyst so as well as the cheer analyst (laughs) that's right let's see if i can do your cheer resume by heart because i think i can i get fuzzy on the year that you started okay so i started are we talking all-star competitive or are we talking like the first time you did a cheer held a pom-pom? <gasps> I guess let's go first time you held a pom-pom. <laughs> that was a really dramatic way of, of going about this, but what I am lo- I no, if that not was dramatic? Um, if I was a, a tiny, tiny. I started when I was three my mom coached our small town's little league cheer program so like when the little league football Mm -hmm. players would play on saturdays she would coach the the Mm -hmm. cheerleaders my sister's three years older so she was able to be on the team she was old enough i wasn't so they just called me the mascot but i was out there but i was out there yes and that quickly turned into competitive cheerleading because our little league team went to compete at a small regional competition. I don't even know if you would mm-hmm. call it a regional. It was teeny tiny. But that's when we saw our first like all-star gym. Was it Cheer Extreme? It wasn't Cheer Extreme, but Cheer Extreme did exist. Um, it was the Pro Spirit Dazzlers. You don't remember that? I was that? just watching. Yeah, um, no, actually, I just, I swear on everything, 30 minutes ago was just watching a video of the Pro Spirit Dazzlers. Stop. So, essentially, um, my dad, who is the best cheer dad in the world and in history, so when you write your history book, he needs to go yeah, down. Mr. Gardner. He needs to go down in there somehow. Um, he built a cheer gym. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just a cheer gym. So let me back up a little bit. He built a fitness facility in our hometown with a doctor's office and a weight room and basketball courts. But in the back corner, he built a cheer gym. So, I know. So, um, the Pro Spirit Dazzler coaches would come up to that cheer gym and teach and coach like a satellite gym there. So there was Pro Spirit and it was like 40 minutes away from where we lived. But then there was Pro Spirit Mount Airy, which is where I'm from. And after a couple of years, um, we found out that Courtney Smith Pope was doing something similar 
like across town at the YMCA. She was coming up Okay, so to we're like YMCA days. We're like yes. YMCA days. Yeah, Church yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, she that's was, tying it in Thank for you. Me. So you can put dates on this because I'm... I'm yes. It's, it's like 2001, 2002, I think. But she was doing yeah. this across town. And um, eventually that just merged and Courtney was doing Cheer Extreme Mount Airy at the cheer gym where my dad worked. <laughs> okay, and then were you on, did you start on Junior Elite? I was I was on Youth Elite as well. Um, I, I want to say I was, Mm, was I ever on a mini team at Cheer Extreme? No, I don't think so. I think when I started at I Cheer Extreme, so I was I was youth age. I was on other youth teams. Like I was crossover central over here. Like I was everywhere. I love that we're gonna. I do this every time. You know what people forget? Remember when Cheer Extreme had level six teams for seniors? Like like old level six. When I re like the flipping baskets yeah. and like two and a half the first time i saw cheer extreme was a video was like on tv and senior elite was doing flipping baskets and two and a half highs so okay help me remember this because before it was level one through six what did we call division um so you would have been so junior elite was junior advanced advanced intermediate so, yes 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 advanced yes, intermediate yes. and um novice <laughs> were the three and open so yeah. it was open advanced intermediate novice thank you then you had open senior junior junior prep slash youth minis wow things i would have so, never thought about so i was on some intermediate teams and then i was also on advanced Advanced but then by 2000 okay so we know 0203 we're like on a youth team we're just gonna call we're gonna say youth elite that sounds sure. right mm -hmm. yeah but by 04 you're on junior elite i'm pretty sure correct definitely by 04 because, because 05 was a big year for us so i was i was there in 04 we will get to 05. Okay. That's on, that is on the docket. And then we have, so we have 05. Okay, so here we go. We have, we start in the early 2000s and then we're on a youth team, a cheer extreme youth team. We'll say youth elite, 02, 03. We're on junior elite, 04, junior elite, 05, junior elite, 06. And I'm pretty sure you were on junior elite in 2007, but went to Worlds with senior Correct. elite in 2007. Yes. And then you were on Senior Elite 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. Then you went to UNC. Yeah. And you're a Tar Heel. Oh, Heel. Where, you, where you concluded your cheerleading career. But you're back <laughs> in a different capacity now. That, that's not in an athlete Correct. capacity. Correct. Oh, yes, that's wild. Um, so that's when the athlete career concluded, correct. And that was in 2016 yes. when I graduated from college. Now I'm back in a broadcast and media way. So which is, I, exactly, which has just been, may I say, an absolute dream come true. Yeah, do tell. So I think, um, ever since I was in sixth grade, so what was I, 11, 12? Yeah. I wanted to to broadcast. I, I wanted to be on the news. I wanted like to okay. be the news girl, um, have okay. a talk show kind of thing. That's what I wanted. So I would literally like I bought it. I saved my money to buy a tripod so I could put our family's video camera up so I could tape my own talk shows. And please, maybe one day we'll find one. But I don't know where they are. Um, and I think throughout all of it, the dream was like, I'm going to come back and talk about cheerleading because this is what I love. Like, this is my life. This is what I love. This is what I do and who I am from age three to 22, right? Mm -hmm. And last year I got a call. It was start of the year. And um, they said, do you have any interest at all in competitive cheerleading? Like, do you keep up with competitions? And I was like, I'm a lurker. 
right? Like I don't go to competitions anymore, but I I watch, especially senior yeah. old girl. Like I, you can't not yeah. watch. Um, yeah. And they were like, well, your name got thrown out to maybe have you know, a part in the summit broadcast. It's going to be on ESPN this year. And I was like, literally say no more. Say, like, I will do, I will do that. Like, I'll figure it out. Just let's do it. And from there, it's grown with more opportunities. And I'm really excited to just be back at more competitions this year and coming up actually very soon. The first one I'm going to go back to this season. So good things. Can we just pump the brakes really mm -hmm. quickly before we go any further? I have watched you grow up when everything you set out to do, I've watched you fall and you've come back and then I have chills. And then to see what you've done with your life, I can't no. articulate just how proud I am so, so proud of you. So 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 Aww. proud of you beyond cheerleading like just the human being you became and everything you accomplished i'm really talking to maddie like 2008 right now like you accomplished so much and it makes me teary-eyed how proud i am of you Ugh. so proud of you well no i'm teary-eyed and i know we said like we're probably gonna cry by minute 15 but i think yeah. it's minute i don't even know i don't have a clock yeah. but like i don't know either but yeah goodness gravy <laughs> i know <laughs> Yeah, I am. I'm so proud of you. Like, <laughs> oh, well, I'm proud of you. I mean, truly, I think, you know, that that age and era of cheerleading. It's even if we weren't all friends at the, the time and I'm thinking of like competitors and whatnot, I think we've yeah, all sure. just come together so much and like, w I mean, you call it the golden age, whatever you want to like yeah. that, that yeah. era. And, um, it's just really neat to see what everyone has accomplished. Um, you know, big red from shooting stars and yeah. all, all of it. It's, it's, it's insane yeah. and amazing. And I love seeing where everyone is like Kelsey rule, all those girls, Tony, I, I just, I keep up with them on Instagram and Twitter and, yeah. and it's, thank you, thank it's you. really special. What do you think, what do you think made our era? So everyone calls it the golden era, right? What do you think made it so golden? I think it's when competitive cheerleading really hit its stride. I think there was a clear distinction, um, between collegiate and school and all-star emerging at that time. Like you heard about, Kentucky and Louisville and, um, you know, all of the legacy collegiate teams that mm -hmm. people thought of when they thought of cheerleading. I mean, even the University of North Carolina, like where I went to school, we didn't compete when I was there, but back in the day, like killing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think like competitive cheerleading became more established and more widespread. And then it was in these little towns like mine and people were getting invested in it and it was no longer a sideline thing. Um, and I, I think like that's when the creativity really kicked off. I know you've done a ton of stuff about theme routines and just the evolution mm -hmm. of uniforms and styles. And mm -hmm. when we, like we used to do a full cheer in the middle <laughs> of our teams, yeah. like that's, and, and I think that's really when, in my opinion, the, the show biz of it was there, the athleticism was on display, mm -hmm. and I think you have to um, credit just technology as well and the availability of video um, and accessing that video, which you know all about and has only evolved. But... It, it, people were able to get their hands on these competitions and these routines and watch them even if they weren't physically at an event. Yeah. We, I think I've, I think I watched you on Junior Elite in 2006. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Four, four million times. At least four million times. <laughs> at least four million times. Um, at, that's it. Just it. That's it. Just at least four million times. Which was, uh, what stunt was that? What music was that? 2006. Was that one, two, two three, four? Come on, baby, say you love me. I think that the, or was that, that five? is, oh, six is one, two, three. What like, comes after what comes seven? What comes after seven? I love that. 
I think, okay, I think that, sp- speaking of the golden era, that, right there, you could say what comes after seven in your music. I don't know if you could, but you No, didn't. you shouldn't have, probably. Um, but you did. Oh, we did. We did. And you know what? I... I don't take it back. I, I don't know if I take it back or not, but I will say, like, that was fun. That was a fun time. And I love your athletics and the Jags. And I mean, I just wanted to be on that team too. If we're being honest, you know, they were also unstoppable. The music the next year. Remember when they were like, want to know what comes after seven Jags music. The next year was back to cheer extreme and said, do you want to know what comes after seven world champions? Oh, because Jags won worlds the year that junior elite had that voiceover. Yes. Yes. Correct. Um, Wow. And, I mean, there were, mm-hmm. on the topic of music. Look up music, the stars are fading. Look up the stars are fading. Was yeah. that us? Yeah. That wasn't us. No, that no. Was... You were, your, you were, your, your lips are dry. Your hair is fried. Your makeup is We didn't, that wasn't in the music, Tomas. <laughs> that wasn't actually in the music. Then but that's I, let, so mean. We, yeah, we haven't even talked about the F5 hater mix ever. Which on I podcast. have on my phone. Actually, I also have on my phone. I have it right here as well. Again, not nice. Not nice. But that was a good mix. It's really good. It's really interesting. Isn't it? Okay. And we're aside, marching. Yeah. What a, what like a weird, like what a weird paradox that like we didn't, we never, I could never imagine bullying anyone the way kids are bullied now. Right. But our music said, like, you're garbage. But, like, we were all friends. And now I feel like the music is not as shady. But outside of cheer- outside of music, um, they're psychopaths. Yes. I, w- I will echo that. I will agree with that. I think um, never were we being so mean on... People were mean on the fierce board. Let me, like, they were not nice. Um, on that however you remember the fierce board of course okay i was on the fierce board i just lurked we were lurking ever i for sure never talked and if i was on there to no one's surprise i was asking for music or videos we had a lot more room because we were able to use real music right so like like one year stingrays had us like the print song seven when Jags was going for seven and it said all seven and we'll watch yeah. them fall. All seven like, and we'll watch them fall. Uh-huh. I remember that. Yeah, that's brilliant. Like, that's so good. That's such good yeah. music. The music was better. The, the music, music was, was better. so much better. Ugh. And, like, you had Celine Dion. I was at her. The last thing I did before COVID-19 was see her live. Like, that's the last big event I was at was a concert in Charlotte here. And, um, I was a basket case the whole time because you she was she, because you were doing the, because she were, narrated us like my team. Yeah. Yeah. Like your childhood. She, was, she literally narrated your child. Yes. My, yeah. my senior quote was Celine Dion, like in the yearbook of high school. Um, it was from alive and it was so cheesy and it's only begun. I can't wait for the rest of my life. Of course. When you call on me. <laughs> I am obsessed with you even more. Thank God. Okay. Which was a World Cup Question. pyramid and they cartwheeled off. That song. When you re- Yes. Yeah. That's um, 2006. Look at you. That's how quick I. Yeah. That's 2006. You were. You're up there as like a lot of kids. Childhood heroes. Um, and their inspiration. Who was yours? And cheerleading. So I will say, and it's so like kismet that you asked me this because um, last week, two of like my senior elite heroes messaged me on Instagram after something I posted. Um, they're maiden names here, but Katie Swice Good and Sarah Frazier. And they were, you know, the group before, really two groups before my class. Um, and we would like get to the gym early to watch them practice. And they were always so kind and welcoming and just sweet. And I, 
fierce, honestly, like, and I, I always looked up to them and I wanted, I remember my mom used to say, um, when, you know, people would start to recognize me at competitions or, or something, she would even say like, how would Sarah Frazier act, you know? And it, it's like, I, I need to tell her that, right? Because like, that was a huge part of my cheer journey too, was just trying to model the way I acted and presented myself at competitions um, and competed after those older girls. And that was the same, roughly the same group that Courtney's younger sister, Kelly, who now runs mm -hmm. Raleigh, was. So really cool, that whole group. That's, gosh, you've been around Cheer Extreme a long time. <laughs> You know, a lot of people know Cheer Extreme now as like SSX and mm -hmm. Senior Elite the, and, and Coed Elite and all of these high profile teams with a million followers and really sparkly uniforms. If you, But not very many people know about turtlenecks and uniforms that weighed 18 pounds and curly hair and pigtails and hair pieces. all of those things all of it yeah. what what are your early memories of cheer extreme i mean all of that right like i'm thinking now of the three pieces that you wore on your uniform you're right like the bodysuit yep and yeah the bloomers were separate the flippy skirts um i remember just the, like the girls that i grew up doing that with mm -hmm. um the friendships obviously but just like how much it meant, like how big it was in my life. I think that it's a lot of people don't understand that about this sport because, you know, mm -hmm. if, if every sport is important to every athlete, right? But this one was so much more of a lifestyle and so much more of yourself was invested in it, I think, because it wasn't something you did at school. So it was like this separate group of friends that you went to see a practice and hang out with. And it was like this whole other life that you had outside of it. Um, and then more and more over the years, like it became such a huge part of not only my life, but my family's life. Because I mean, I told you about my dad <laughs> who, yeah. built, who built the cheer gym. <laughs> uh, my mom obviously is the reason we were cheering to begin with because she cheered in high school and she was the little league coach. My sister was like my base on youth junior and senior elite until she graduated in 2009, three years before me. Like she was my secondary base, my older sister. So like we won Dallas together in 2005. She was on that team. Yeah, like that, I mean, it was, our whole life was that. My whole family was that. Our vacations were Dallas and Myrtle Beach and you know, yeah. Nashville for competition. And Cheer Extreme is a very rich, tr it's very tradition. Do you, it's very tradition oriented, it is. or it was at the time. I'm assuming it still is. I'm sure. So Courtney um, always said like she created her own sorority <laughs> when she, she when she started yeah. Cheer Extreme. So we would do at summer camps and stuff. We would do sister ceremonies, and like you would get your little or your big, just like you would in a sorority and um you'd have like your secret sister and there was a whole like i hope they still do this courtney would have one of those candles created at the beach with all the different wax colors for the team and we'd sit in her hotel room and the new people would sit in the middle circle and the veterans would sit in the outer circle and the circle would pass around the candle and then when it got to your sister like you blow it out and then like that was your person on the team like it was all that tradition and all that sisterhood um and it was just special it was just special why did we all do stuff like that? Is that <laughs> such, all, we all like i'm like we all did why did we all because you know what's crazy it's not though like senior elite wildcats like these kids now they want to be a part of it so bad and it means so much to them and it meant a lot to us too but like something as it can seem as silly as passing a candle kids now would do anything to say they were a part of yeah. that it's like it that's like these are such 
storied teams that are so high profile and so just revered mm -hmm. and they're the, it it's it's wild to think some of those traditions that we did that may seem silly but people that's like people's dream like people would dream to be on senior elite and have the veterans circle around them and have a candle yeah. i'm crying oh, i want to be on senior i need elite to i mean that. it was and it's just like i don't think about those things until you ask me about them now like i would have forgotten that um, which is another reason what you're doing, I think, is so important. But it's it was just so organic, too. Like, yeah. these were the days before people would move their families to a different state to be on a team. You know, like, these were people who you grew up with. Do you know I was one of the first kids to do that? And... Like, of it. It, ever. I love it. American Cheerleader did a story on it. Yeah. American Cheerleader! <laughs> I forgot about American Cheerleader. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, uh, I was one of the kids that moved across. I moved on my 17th birthday. Oh my gosh. Alone. Across the country. To Texas. To be on Wildcats. I love that. Yeah. You're the OG. I really am the OG. Like, I really am the OG. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot about a lot of. <laughs> Just, I know a lot about cheerleading from the 2000s. It's like my area of expertise for sure. <laughs> it's like when people ask you, what could you do a 20 minute presentation on without pre preparing? And you're like, early 2000s cheerleading? I want to know. Well, I think everyone wants to know. You, I remember, hold on, I can like paint the picture. They're like from Kernersville, North Carolina, senior league. You come out first like waving bowing doing the you have a bob a headband it's really fierce you're like by yourself like you come everyone would watch you and it wasn't just because you were you you commanded their attention what was your driving force what was going on in your head or what were you doing that, that evoked that kind of emotion in you or i will say that that all did stem from doing it one time many years before I ended my cheer competitive cheer career and like we hit a perfect routine and we're so superstitious like the entire cheer extreme program is and was so superstitious that like it had to happen like that every time and let's say fast forward that right so let's say the music starts uh-huh you still were so captivating so enthralling whether you were flying or you were jumping or you were just standing in the corner, you commanded everyone's attention. Where did that come from? I truly just loved it so much. And it was so important to me. And I was so passionate about it. Like mm -hmm. you hear eat, sleep, breathe, and then cheer. But it, tr I mean, it truly was yeah. all I cared about. I didn't care about boys. I didn't care about prom. I didn't care about dances. I didn't care. Like, the only thing I wanted to do was be at practice or be at a competition. It meant, like, it, and I, I mean, again, it's, I think that that's a huge part of the performance, right? Because you're pouring your whole self into this. And that's you dramatic are. for me to say, like, as a 12 year old, I was doing this, it's but I, tr I was like, everything led up to the next competition all throughout childhood. I, it was, it's weird to say at the time, but we were professional athletes. Absolutely. Um, how did you handle the pressure of being a professional athlete? the later part of your career you're on the cover of magazines you're on cnn you are you you also got to be a part of the rise of social media you're one of the few people that cheered in my time pre-social media and then grew and got to be mm -hmm. in the beginning of instagram and twitter and you balance that and you're also a brilliant student because I, I followed your academic career, you're smart. Like, how did you balance being a professional athlete in 17 and having chemistry homework, but also having a photo shoot and then having <laughs> CNN there? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, thank you for, for being so kind and saying all of that. I think like, I mean, my mom and my parents were just such a huge part 
of all of it. And I, I think I realize that more now than ever because they always made sure that I understood how important my different roles were. Obviously, like, you know, growing up in school and, and you know, you need to focus on that and, and that ultimately comes first. But at the same time, like you're, they recognize that I had a, a gift in cheerleading and my sister did as well and that we enjoyed it and we're passionate about it. Um, and so encouraging us to continue with that and to pursue that, which was just a natural fit for our, our family. Um, when everything kind of took off, like from mm -hmm. Whatever, like I put on a headband for the first time until 2012 sure. after my yeah. last world performance. Like yeah. when that, when that trajectory began, um, I think I'll credit again my parents and Courtney for just kind of protecting me in that way. I think um, there was a lot of negativity swirling, especially toward the later years when social media, when message boards, when anonymity online became more popular. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that they helped me focus on the role I had as a teammate and less the role I had as like Maddie who people mm -hmm. knew. Um, mm -hmm. and that was, that was always emphasized so early on that it was just a natural transition. Like it was never, it never needed to be a, comp a conversation of like, Hey, you know, people want to get their picture made with you, but you know, like you need to focus on your routine and the competition and the team first. Like it, it was just like, that made sense because that's just the way yeah. I was brought up and um, brought into that. But it, I mean, just like the magnitude of it all, the commitments, the time commitments, all of it. Looking back now, I was like, how, how did we survive? <laughs> how did how did we do that? Because you'd get out of school, you'd get in the car, you'd do your homework in the car, you'd go to a three hour practice that was 45 minutes away from your house. On the way home, you'd rush to make it to Chick-fil-A before it closed at nine so you could get home by 10 and be in bed and be at school at eight. And then you did it again. And then in World Series, you did it every day, you know? So the generation before us created traditions yeah. and then our generation was the one that was like, Oh, we should maybe, we should maybe keep these and maybe Correct. we should teach the next group of kids why they're important. And to see that they've kept doing it is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get to keep up with, I don't know really any of the athletes on senior elite now. Like I know Kenley Pope because yeah. I went to the hospital when Kinley Pope was born. Like, you know, like that, that's that's why How I know that is. child. How um, weird is that, by the way? I know. She's a senior in high school. She is. She's she a, is. a senior. This like, is her final year. Crazy. Um, but I don't, like, I don't have connections to them because I have a relationship with them. Like, I don't know them. I don't know their names or their backgrounds or anything. But yeah. I know how they're feeling. And I know what kind of experiences they're going through because it is a storied history and so tradition-based that people, like I mentioned in the beginning, the Sarah Swice Goods, the Sarah Frasers, yeah. the Kelly Hilton uh, Smiths of the world, like yeah. they started that. Yep, yep. And it's, it's still to Kinley Pope and beyond, right? That's insane, yes. So I want to go back to, you can tell the story about winning NCA for the first time. Can I tell you that I think if I truly look back, that win meant more to me than winning Worlds for the first time. Winning I Dallas. Don't, I, just, I don't know why. I, I agree with you, but you can like feel it, pal. It like you can feel it in watching the video. That's what I want to talk about, actually. Like, you're in fifth grade because you're the same grade as the year, right? Yeah, so you're that's right. Yeah. Grade. I, that's how I know. Yeah. So you're in fifth grade and everyone on that team looks checked in like you were there to win in a way that you didn't even see most senior teams compete at the time. 
Like, wh why, why did you care so much about winning Dallas in fifth grade? I think, um, again, it, go it goes back to the sisterhood, the bond, the tradition that Courtney created. Because Junior Elite and Senior, like, you know, those were her teams. Yeah. Co-ed Elite as well, but co-ed had been coaching, you know, so like Courtney was coaching Junior Elite and Senior Elite. Yeah. But, um, so there was, there was just so much passion among those girls and it was, it became this story that we were living and, um, goodness, Jags huge run seven years in a row back to back to back to back to back unbeatable yeah. legacy program from texas yeah. yeah we're from this small town that no one can pronounce when we come out on the floor north carolina i mean it was david and goliath at that point true underdog story all of it you know like every yeah. cliche yeah. sports movie yes i remember tell we Courtney always did something like there, whenever we went to Dallas there we always did the same thing first of all we always went to see the the highlights of Dallas and stun in front of all of the different monuments and that was like a whole day but that year we went to see the hockey movie miracle when team USA <laughs> beats the Russians because Courtney had set this story up for us that this is what we were going to do. We were going to come in and win the biggest title on the biggest stage at the time and take down, you know, the team that had always done it. And I think that like, just, it just set into motion that whole <laughs> storyline. And then you go out and it's, perfect and we have this music and this attitude and this what do we have to lose like what do we, what do we have to lose And you had been so close before as well. Junior right. Elite was starting to like get on the heel, like had started placing in the top three. Mm -hmm. In 04, you had placed in the top three. You would beat Stingray. So you had already started beating some really high profile junior teams. Celebrity Cheer, Starlight. Celebrity Cheer, yeah. I know, yeah. Celebrity Cheer, Starlight, Stingray's Green. Like you had already started beating some really high profile junior teams. And then 05 happens, and you guys wanted it so bad. So bad. We were, it was a what talented was group. And when you think about it, that was senior elite in what? 09? Yeah, 10. And most of you, yeah, that's like the senior elite girls that like started the winning deck, yeah. like started the winning streak. Yeah. I want to know who, in whose mind, who was like, hey, I want you to do a ball and I want it to spin and I want you to catch and then I want you to tick tock. Um, dip, we dip on one. Okay. Who do you, <laughs> yep. Who do you think? Just give me, give me like two or three people who you I think. I think I, okay. Well, I remember this is also me using my encyclopedia brain. In the beginning of the season, you actually did a ball up to an opposite stretch and then tick tock. Like you didn't, it didn't twist all season. Mm -hmm. So we, this will be helpful for you. We created that stunt and practiced it oh, starting wow. at okay. beach camp. So that's, but we didn't compete it until World. later on. I'm still speechless about it. I think everyone's still speechless. It's still iconic and it's like. Okay. It wasn't Courtney. It was not Ben. Ellie. So. Senior Elite was like the TikTok team and shooting stars and F5, like they did full ups. Like that's how they hit the level five skill. They do a full up. Senior Elite did the TikTok. So I remember we were thinking of variations of a full up and a TikTok and not a switch up. Like we didn't want that, but we wanted 
to incorporate both of those skills in a way that was just like, we can do both, you know, at the same dang time. And so I think initially it was like a full up TikTok, but then you couldn't pull up on the opposite leg. So it was like, okay, it needs to be a release move. But it didn't look good when it was a release with straight legs, like you would do a full up. And I even think we did some variation of like a hitch kick to the low stretch. But that, so it ended up being like a full ball up um, 360, land on the left at the bottom, switch to the right at the top. Did it hit at camp? We hit it at camp. <laughs> course you did it was always really scary for me to perform that actually it was scary to watch because it was on it was on me like if it didn't hit it was my stunt no one got it on video but i had heard rumors they were like maddie's gonna twist that ball up and i was like there's n that's not humanly i remember saying like that's not humanly possible and then here we are um also the song connection that you made to did you know that was going to happen? Like, did Courtney say, like, we're going to bring back the Junior Elite-like moment? Mm -hmm. Or was that was that JR? It might have been JR. And no, it was definitely, it had to be Courtney. It had to be Courtney. Only Courtney's brain could do that. Because she's so smart. Courtney loves reference. A lot. Mm -hmm. She was lot Taylor Swift before Taylor Swift. She was. She I loves <laughs> she loves to reference and then evolve something. She really has been doing the same thing for like almost 30 years and then just keeps evolving it. And then even it's when you think about it, it's called like the X evolution. Like mm -hmm. she's it's so it's a it's all beautiful. So that song obviously yeah. has like so much meaning to me yeah. that I'm, yeah. you know, thinking about planning a wedding and I'm yeah. like, do, do, do. can I, can I get a string quartet to play this as I walk down the <gasps> aisle? <laughs> well, Courtney, Courtney wouldn't be okay. Courtney wouldn't be okay. I won't be okay. Courtney. I mean like sure. what? No one would know. Like Courtney I'll would know. know. Yeah, for sure. That's brilliant. But like. You heard it here In first, folks. In this world, we're just beginning. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's probably not a very like romantic wedding song. It totally. And is. my husband will probably be like, "Maddie, what? It, what?" You're like, "Don't worry." <laughs> but fifth grade I'm Maddie like, would be living. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was Kelly. It was Kelly. <laughs> Back to that. We're full circle. I don't think I realized how impressive some of the things we were doing were until like you wake up now and you can't do them. <laughs> do you think you could do a 360 anymore. ball up stretch right now? I think if I, I think if I, yes, I would not allow myself not to do it. A B I think if I like think if I really put my mind to it, I could, and I got a stunt group. I think I could do it. All right. You heard it here first. America. <laughs> oh my gosh, Courtney. I'm going to start. I, now that part is for sure going on to social media in 30 minutes. So be prepared. And about, <laughs> I'll make the comeback has begun and g give it a week from this time that we recorded and you will be inside of cheer extreme doing a 360 ball. Up. I need to start stretching and running. Why do you love cheerleading? I love the sport because of the athleticism um, and the grit and the determination of athletes, how physically impressive it is, the level of adoration I have for cheerleading that I can literally not go to a competition in 10 years. And then when you go back, I was emotional the entire time. Like I, being in the warm up gym, it's making me being shake. in the wide world of sports, seeing the competition match, like hearing the same announcer who announced you 10 years ago still there behind the stage, like it's it's so special and it's just because i think so many of life's biggest moments were lived in those settings and but the pageantry of it too and that's what i love so Ooh, much pageantry. about our sport because it was 
a show and it yep. was a performance and it yeah. was like you are playing a part but you're doing these incredibly impressive physical skills that like yeah. no one else can do yeah it's weird <laughs> It's just like the shooting star who runs out first in front of the team and goes like this and is waving and bowing and singing yeah. the words to the music. Like I'm watching the college football national championship and I'm watching these young men like run out of the tunnel with the arena cheering and the fireworks going off. And yeah, I never cheered in front of 70,000 people in SoFi Stadium. But I know what that feels like, right? Because I had my version of that. You did. We all did. We all and, did. And um, not, not very few sports have that. Yeah. Anything you would tell your 17-year-old self? Stop. I'm proud oh. of you. That's real. Yeah. <laughs> I am. <laughs> wow, that got real. That's please elaborate. The tears, the tears are flowing. Um, I think you. When I was in the sport, when I was cheering, I was always like pushing myself to be better, pushing myself to, to do more and to be perfect and to um, be there for teammates and for other people that weren't on the team that wanted us to do well and wanted us to hit like that pressure. And I always felt that. And then after I left All-Star, I didn't want to be only All-Star to your Maddie. Like I wanted to go to college and, you know, just, be on the UNC cheer team and not compete. Like I, I was ready for that transition. Um, and then I got into this work of local news where I wanted to be known for being a journalist and for being someone you trusted to tell stories and to report important information. And it wasn't really until last year that I was able to embrace everything that I had done in competitive cheerleading and say like, that's impressive. Like I was proud of myself in that moment. And I think for 10 years, I was trying to reinvent myself over and over and over again. Um, and not distance myself from cheerleading by any means, because I've always loved it, but just be cheer and more. Maddie plus this, plus this, plus this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until like really last year when I got asked to come back and commentate and report for summit that I was like, yeah, that, that, that was impressive. And um, for you to do all that and still be successful in other aspects of your life to get into your dream college to get your dream job, to work your way up to doing other things outside of it, knowing that it was all because of what I did in cheerleading that I was able to do all these other things. Um, so I don't know that I ever stopped once I left competitive cheerleading after I, you know, walked off the mat in 2012 in the milk house, what was the milk house that I said, like, be proud of yourself. Oh my gosh, I love that. I'm so proud of you. You oh. should be so proud. You should be so proud of yourself. You should. I hope you're proud of yourself. I am. I really am. And I think um, that's why it's so exciting to be able to be involved in things related to and in All Star Cheerleading now. Because I've been able to, I guess, reconcile. <laughs> Yeah. All of that. Not that it was ever a negative thing. It was just something that I didn't want to rely on or for people to think that I was um, 
only good at this because of that. Like I wanted to prove myself in other arenas. Well, you've done that too. Well, thanks. So I hope you tell yourself current day 2023, Maddie, that you're proud of her as well. <laughs> I mean that because I'm proud of 2023, Maddie, also hmm. as much as I am 2012, Maddie. The word legend gets thrown out a lot. What do you think makes a legend in cheerleading? Legends are made or different in the way they <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> and that concludes that. Bye, everyone. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. They Legends leave the sport different than the way they found it. I'm taking that. I'm like literally taking that in. That's beautiful. Say no more. Really, I don't <laughs> think you should say more, right? Like, say no more. I, th I mean, and there are so many of them. And I, we're just, we're really blessed to have you, A, bringing all of that back together and back to light for people. Um, it, it's really special because I think moments pass in our sport now and it's still our sport like we're all still involved and Thank you. um we we might realize why things are the way they are but many people don't and you're you really are helping people see that so i Thank know i've said i mean i just can't say it enough like this is Thank you so this much. is really really cool um I start crying <laughs> We're all we're, crying. Yeah, we, yeah, we're all crying. Any advice that you would have for kids, especially that are on a high profile team, a senior mm -hmm. elite, a Top Gun large co-ed, a Wildcats, there's this thing, this like energy suck that happens mm. when you suddenly don't do all-star shooting anymore. And you know this, you had to go to school, you had to go to um, work, you were, I'm sure, at the bottom of the food chain in news, and yeah. they weren't like, oh, Maddie, you can be late to work today because you've won Worlds. So don't, don't work. You, kn you know what it's like to leave All Star Cheerleading and be on the cover of a magazine to also being on the bottom of the food chain and your boss doesn't say, oh, you did a ball up 360, so you're... You don't have to come into work on time or, you know what, this, your final exam, you can take extra time on because you're Maddie Gardner. Of course you can. You get treated like a normal person where your cheerleading accolades don't have any weight. Yeah. How do you navigate that exit from cheerleading into the real world? Right. And I think now more than ever, it's easy to live in this little insulated um, world of cheer and think that these are the most important things in life. Because they are right now, 1,000%. Like, I, I was there too. Um, you quickly realize that it is not the most important thing. It's important to you and it will always be special and meaningful to you. Um, and it's a humbling experience. So I think that's where you can really build on all of the important things that cheer teaches you that aren't skill-based or that don't earn you points in competitions. Like you learn about being a good teammate, being a good friend, being a good coworker who shows up on time to work as the same teammate who shows up on time to practice, being respectful of each other, um, giving your best. I mean, all of that comes into play in the real world in different applications. There are things that you take away that are universal. Mm -hmm. And then there are things that you'll always hold special to you with your little secret language from other cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and I think I say this every time and I'll be a broken record. You can take that drive and that passion that you had to win or whatever it took for you to make senior elite or shooting stars. You can take that and apply it to a career as well. It's as Absolutely. You'd be, you'd be really silly to not actually. Like I mm -hmm. think a lot of people don't get that kind of motivation and I want kids to hear that. Like mm -hmm. take all of that passion you have and that live, eat, breathe, sleep, cheerleading, live, eat, breathe, sleep your job and you, <laughs> you'll you be your boss's favorite. You'll make a lot of money. Like people, you'd be a great employee. People, If people only applied those that kind of drive to their job. I hope that people realize how much 
like how much work like you you're not allowed to downplay what you like that's rule number one okay how much work your videos and the podcast take for you like people don't realize that you find the original music file to uh-huh. overlay on top of the video because the quality uh-huh. is better uh-huh. and the music tells a story uh-huh. and it's important the narrative uh-huh. like Bravo, encore. And you get Roses. that. Those are those are details that you're like, chef's kiss. Because yeah. you get. And we're going to play a game called Love Your Hair, Hope You Win. And I am going to say the name of someone that you either cheered with, cheered against, maybe a coach. And your job is to say like something fun about them, like a story you have. I know, I know who you know. Courtney Smith Pope. Icon, inspiration, yeah, huge reason of why I am the person I am today. Innovator, dreamer, yeah, all of it. Any good stories? Mastermind. Are there honestly, any good Courtney stories that you have? Like are a there? Good Courtney story? I mean, all of it. Like I, I was at Courtney's wedding, Courtney and Ben's wedding, yeah. and usually yeah. made. Um, we got yeah, in elevators or half and we put our arms together and they walked through a tunnel of cheerleaders. <laughs> like, again, was at the hospital when Carly was born and Kinley. Um, Courtney at WCA in Nashville, I remember. So Kinley's birthday is like the beginning, toward the beginning mm-hmm. of December, like Mm-hmm. The 11th or 12th, I think. I, something I'm, like that, yeah. Something like that. So, um, WCA was the 26th, 27th, yep. 28th, 29th, like, through New Year's. Um, so, Kinley was three weeks old, and, like, we babysat Kinley. Courtney made everything a moment. She made everything special. Um, I, I mean, all of it. There, There was never a dull moment. Gabby Dinsbeer. <gasps> Gabby Dinsbeer Switzer. Yeah. So you know Gabby and I cheered at UNC together. You know this. Yes, of course. Um, I adore Gabby. I'm proud of Gabby. <gasps> She's forging okay. her own path and just like living life and embracing everything. And I mean, she's she's having another baby. Like it's amazing. Yeah. Gabby's so smart too. Um, she graduated early from UNC. Like, she is incredibly intelligent. And I always admired Gabby's spirit. And just, like, she, always lighthearted and happy, um, but real. Like, she was in my sorority, too, at UNC. Oh, and okay. so you're, like, sister, her, sister. Her big sister in my sorority was Alana Zetaney, who was also on Senior Elite. A flyer in 2010. So it's all connected. Yeah, you guys are a cult. For my senior banquet for UNC, Gabby made me a framed uniform with my name on the back. And gave it to me like a shadow box. And I still have it. Like, it's one of Of my most prized possessions. And like, she's she's special. I I do. Big heart. Okay. Ugh. I know who it's going to be. Erica Engelbert. That's so weird. Whoa. How did you do that? Wait, is it though? Or are you just joking? Yes. No, it really is. Because I was, I was going, gonna, I was, do I go Erica, like, Gabby or Gabby, Erica? Yeah, Gabby. I mean, it's a logical like, uh, um, transition. Yes. Here we go. Erica. Erica is a superstar. Okay. Like, it, you you say like I had the it factor whatever yeah. like that is Erica to me. Okay. She so fun to watch. Um, I I actually really did feel like Erica was a little sister on the team, even more so than Gabby was. It, I mean, just like showstopper performer. Um, I think Gabby and I similar like we were similar flyers we both had long lines yeah and our technique was very similar yep but erica 
of course had the technique she was a main flyer but she yeah. i mean she was just fun to watch in the air yeah like when i watch gabby i'm like that's beautiful when i'm when i watch eric i'm like i can't take my eye off you yeah and um i mean many people know like how important erica's mom was to her and to like our entire team and i just um it's really it really warms my heart because i think that you know we don't keep in touch and i like this is i'm like gonna reach out to all these people now because <laughs> they're on my heart and mind but um i just think sandy would be so proud of her like I just, Sandy oh. loved Erica so much and she loved our team and she was, I mean, she made our bloomers and our practice wear and our bows and all of it. It was just, I mean, she was, so yeah, lots of love, all of that. Okay. Brad Habermill. <gasps> I do love Brad. Do, do you know that I went to Barcelona with Brad? What? <laughs> <laughs> I did not and know that. Kristen. And Kristen. Rosario. Uh, and Kristen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> just for vacation? Please tell me just for fun. Like, I we're in chat. And I Brad wish. and Kristen and I just went to Barcelona just for a fun nope. little getaway. So, a couple of years ago, I was still in college, and there was like this cheer camp that, um, a friend of Brad and Kristen's put on and he was actually a, a UNC cheerleader back in the day. Um, and unfortunately he's passed away now, but he put on a camp called cheer up world and it was in Barcelona. And so he invited friends of his in the industry to come and teach clinics. And so like Brad, Kristen, um, I was there. Um, Anthony Burrell from like dance moms was there. <laughs> <laughs> very random um yes so we were all a part of this camp this clinic and things like didn't go perfectly there was some mix-up with travel and hotel and all of that it just kind of and so one day we didn't have anywhere to go and we went to the beach like i don't even think i packed a swimsuit we were in like cheer clothes i love it oh i adore him one of those legendary people that I didn't really interact with a ton because we didn't cross over with your athletics. Like we would see world cup. We would see F5 because yeah. top gun even, cause it was the East coast. Like we would yep. be at Atlanta competitions and all that, yep. but your athletics wouldn't. So, um, he, he's just so genuinely kind beyond. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. Come back soon and see the cheer analyst studio again.